Need money now? Get a choice pawn load on things you already own, like guns, boats, campers, trailers, recreational vehicles, and just about everything else. Get a loan from Choice Pawn in Fulton and Tupelo. Get cash today. ChoicePawn.com From the moment they were young, you cheered them on. You defended them and you encouraged them. Why? Because as a child's parent, you are their greatest influence. You always wanted them to be better, accomplish more, and make a difference. We want that too. At Itawama Community College, we give them the opportunity to live a life above the bar. When I grow up, I'm gonna redefine pizza. One that will change the history of pizza forever. A pizza with the most cheese and the most pepperoni. This is my dream, and I can do it. Because my mom and dad said I can accomplish anything. And I will do great things in life. Sorry, kid, it's been done. But my dream- Introducing Little Caesar's Extra Most Bestest Pizza. A large pizza with the most cheese and the most pepperoni for just six bucks. Pizza, pizza. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to the pitch this afternoon as ICC will be taking on East Central here in a pair of North Division doubleheaders. I'm Adam Gore. Up top is Raphael Henry. Lee Adams is on the sign take it, side taking photos for ICCimages.com. Now, I do want to apologize in advance uh, if I sound a bit under the weather. It's been battling a cold all week, so uh, hopefully no coughing spells. Made it through the football game all the way up to the fourth quarter last night before running into one of those, so... Uh, Hopefully this afternoon things will go well here for us. So we're just moments away from that first American National Bank opening kick here between ICC and East Central in the women's match. Let's go ahead and look at today's starting lineups being brought to you by Coca-Cola. And this will be your starters for ICC. Number two, Alex Stevens. She is a defender, a freshman out of Amory High School. Number three, Mallory Scott, a sophomore midfielder out of Saltillo. Number five, Maya Richardson. She's a sophomore defender. She's out of New Hope High School. Number six, Emma Godden. She is a freshman midfielder. She is out of Surrey, England. Number nine, Morgan Dennis, a sophomore midfielder. She's also out of South Tillo. Gracie, Gracie Bertelson. She is a freshman midfielder out of Natchez, Mississippi, Natchez Cathedral High School. You've got number 14, Addison Meadows. She is a freshman midfielder out of Oxford. Number 16, Caroline Jaggers, a sophomore midfielder. She's out of South Tillo. Number 17, Deanna Christie, a freshman forward out of Liverpool, England. Number 18, Cynthia Bethencourt. She's a freshman midfielder out of New Albany. And in net for the Lady Indians here is going to be Haley McGill, a freshman out of South Tillo. So we do want to welcome everyone watching here on Let's Go ICC TV.com. ICC will be in the white kit, blue shorts for East Central. They're in their traditional gold and black kits. The numbers on the front are going to be next to impossible to read. But the numbers on the back are pretty clear. So we'll try to bring you those as much as possible throughout the afternoon. Oh, so it's actually going to be Mary Kate getting the start. It was Haley McGill on the sheet that was given to me. So we're underway here. ICC and East Central, this is a North Division matchup. East Central comes in with an overall record of three wins, three losses, and two ties. With a 1-3 mark in the North, ICC 8-5 overall, 4-1 in the North. Still in chase for that North Division championship. And, of course, we talked about it uh, throughout some of the previous broadcasts. The winner of the North Division on the women's side will host the state tournament this season. So there's an opportunity that ICC could host this year's MACJC State Tournament. Of course, that will be held on October the 28th and 29th and would make for an interesting day on campus because that's also homecoming week and weekend here at ICC. Of course, right now, I believe it's Holmes that is leading the North for the women. So ICC with it. This is Meadows. Meadows tries to send it ahead. It's going to be kicked out of bounds by East Central. Throw in here for ICC, and that's going to be Mallory Scott. Scott gets by the defender, sends it ahead. Nice little give-and-go action here. Scott off the left foot, off the back of the defender, and cleared out nicely that time by East Central. Meadows with it now. Steps into it from distance. Goes top corner, but wide. And a good-looking shot that time. Just could not quite get it to fall. 
and a great opportunity there for the Lady Indians. So it'll be a goal kick coming up here for the keeper. 0-0 zero, zero, or nil nil is your score. Coming up on 43 minutes to play here in the first half. We will have the guys game coming your way next here on Let's Go ICC TV. So East Central will toss it in. ICC has dominated the time of possession so far in the contest. That's going to be Burleson with it. Lost it, and they're going to send it out, and that's going to be Morgan Dennis. Dennis was selected All-State last year as a freshman, along with Mallory Scott. ICC now with it. This is going to be Maya Richardson. Meadows trying to dribble her way through traffic. Taken away that time by East Central. Ball at midfield. There's going to be a scramble for it. A nice job that time by Gotten to go out and get it and get the possession back with the Lady Indians. Up the field they go. Deanna Christie had it and it was cleared out by East Central but ICC controls. Meadows didn't have anything so he's going to send it back out to Gotten, who sends it wide to Bethancourt. Bethancourt swings it to Richardson. Richardson coming way up the field from her natural position on the field. And a little nice little give and go but East Central though right there to take it away. Good effort by East Central but the ball is deflected and it's going to be cleared out of bounds and it'll be a throw in here on the side by ICC. Coming up on 42 minutes left here in the first half. I want to say a special thank you to Dave Edwards. He's out in L.A. Uh, stepping up big time for us. Stepping us to get everything set up here this afternoon. Uh, had to make some adjustments uh, to the feed here due to the lack of internet out on the pitch this afternoon course hopefully getting that corrected soon or at least getting a new uh MiFi card as this one is my personal card and it's through Verizon and we're kind of in a uh fringe area I guess you can say for Verizon with the data cards so uh hopefully uh those adjustments will be able to uh help us improve some of our streaming capabilities here for soccer and other uh, places on campus that do not have the hard lines corner kick coming up for the Indians sends it inside too far and it's going to be still in the box here. This kick is an opportunity here. It's high off the cross. Good opportunity there. Nice idea for Madison. Just could not quite get that one to knife in for it. There's that breeze. Where was it about 10 seconds ago that could have possibly put that one in the back of the net? Neil Neil, steal your score. Inside, 41 minutes left here in the first half. Once again, ICC controlling the time of possession in this match. Godden steps in front of that one, puts a head on it. That's going to send it out wide. That's going to be Bertelson. Bertelson sends it ahead. Christie trying to get to the foot race and does beat the uh, East Central player, but they're going to say she was offside on the play. I thought there for a second they might have called a foul, and if it was, it was going to be a PK coming up for Christie, but instead offside, and East Central will have the ball. A nice day for soccer here. Sun's out, blue skies, partly cloudy. Slight breeze, which is very welcomed this afternoon to help keep things kind of cooled off. Earlier start than normal due to uh, some of the time changes coming up. Uh, typically play at two and four, but going at one and three, just trying to get these games in before it gets too dark to play since there's no lights here on the pitch. This is gonna be number six, Patterson with it now. Sends it across, broke it up nicely that time by Emma Godden. And the Lady Indians get it back. ICC trying to reverse field. First time that East Central has had a threat or actually had possession on their, on the Indian side of the pitch. That is going to be deflected. And they're going to say neither official was really sure. And they're going to say that's out on ICC. So the ball will go back to East Central. Coming up on 39-15 to play now. East Central with it. She's just walking down the pitch about 10 steps before throwing it in. And the turnover gives it back to ICC. Dangerous long pass across the pitch. Quickly ahead here. This is going to be a foot race. And great job by Mallory Scott to win that battle. Mallory. Oh, jukes a player from East Central. Then sends it ahead. And oh, just an opportunity there for ICC. But a nice quick decision that time by the keeper of East Central to come up and make a play on that one. 
The young lady from East Central able to get up on her own power. Good sign there. As it looked like she may have tried to twist her ankle or may have twisted her ankle trying to cut back on the move by Scott. Ball is at midfield. And it's going to go out of bounds back to East Central. So the toss in is broken up and taken away by the Lady Indians. Sends it back to midfield and East Central steps back in front of it. East Central with it now on the far side of the pitch. Trying to send it ahead. Does so nicely. Alex Stevens ahead. Good job of getting in front of that one. Just deflecting it a little bit. The ball is going to be deflected off the leg of an East Central player after Jaggers tried to clear it out that time. Scooped up easily by Mary Kate Grayson. And Grayson is going to send this one down the pitch. 50-50 ball and it's going to be taken by East Central. East Central with possession now. Longest possession they've had so far here in the first half. But ICC quickly negates that. Sends it back to midfield, chases it down. It's going to be East Central, but ICC's there to get it back once again. Bethancourt with it now here on the near side. Drops it back. That's going to be Meadows. Meadows trying to weave her way through traffic. Fancy footwork that time by Meadows. Really none of her teammates coming out to help her, and East Central takes it away. But there was Meadows. Nicely done by Meadows to come from behind and poke that one free. Morgan Dennis tried to send it ahead, but East Central steps in front of it. East Central tries to go over the top. Nobody going with her. And easy stop that time by Mary Kate. Jump ball. Jagger sends it ahead. This is Meadows with it now. Sends it up to Dennis. Dennis got a couple of options. Tries to lead it ahead and just a little too far that time. I don't think she realized how strong her foot was on that send ahead. And we'll have our first substitution of the match coming in. And this is going to be number 18, Maddie McLeod, checking into the game. And looks like number 15, Georgie Wilson, and that is who was shaken up on the last play, will come in, and that'll be your Renaissance Bank substitution here for East Central. So EC will send this one ahead, broken up by ICC, but the ball will be controlled by East Central. Quickly up the pitch they go, and there's Alex to step in front of that one. Lady Indians get it back once again, swing it opposite side. Nice little touch that time by Bethancourt. And Mallory Scott, though, just couldn't quite get to it. Good idea that time by Cynthia. Just a little bit too strong on the touch to send it ahead. Mallory Scott could have easily got to that one if she would just have been a little bit slower. So a break there for East Central. Is Sarah Gilliland in net for East Central? And that kick is going to be sent out of bounds. It should be a corner kick coming up for ICC, and it will be. So a chance to make this thing dangerous here for the Lady Indians. So a corner opportunity coming up here. This is going to be number three, Mallory Scott, to send this one in. Scott puts a foot on it. And East Central nicely done, just clogging the lane that time to take away any scoring opportunity for the Lady Indians. EC tries to clear it, gotten from distance. Oh, thought that one had found the back of the net, but it just went over the top of the crossbar. We saw Emma blister one from about 40 out against Hines, and that one that time looked pretty good, but just too high. The top of the crossbar. We saw Emma blister one from about 40. So replay's working now. Just got to get my volume out of it, or at least my audio, I should say. So coming up now on 34 minutes. East Central with it now. Here's an opportunity for Christy. Christy is knocked down. I won't have to say good no call because both players were going for the ball that time. Just incidental contact. And East Central is going to clear it wide. Jaggers is going to let it settle.
Got to be careful here, and Grayson sends it down the pitch across the way. That's going to be Burleson with it. Gracie trying to get by the East Central defender, simply kicked out of bounds, so it'll be a toss in here for ICC. So Letty Indians reset as they clear it back, trying to go over the top. Mallory Scott with it, sends it across to Bethancourt, but East Central just a step too quick for the Lady Indians to be able to take advantage of that one. ICC's had some opportunities here in the early goings of this one, just cannot cash in on them. Neil Neal is your score. 33-03 left here until halftime. Toss in and broken up that time by East Central. Emma Godden, though, there to clean things up for ICC. They clear it back to Jaggers. Jaggers going to reverse the pitch. Sends it across. And East Central now with control. EC across the way. Going to try to send it down the side just a little too strong, and that's going to allow Alex Stevens to chase that one down. So she'll clear it back to Mary Kate, and Mary Kate will try to send it to the side. And just a miscue that time by Grayson. Just one of those mental mistakes that kind of get away from you there, and Grayson knew as soon as she put a foot into it that that one got away from her, but no harm, no foul. Still scoreless. Coming up on 32 minutes of play here in the first half, ICC East Central, the first of two matchups coming your way today here on Let's Go ICC TV. So it'll be a toss in here for East Central. And they're going to clear it back. Good defense by ICC to break up that play and force them to reset their offense. Swing it back near midfield. Oh, pretty big push there by East Central. No call. And ICC just aggressive on defense. Takes that one away is Morgan Dennis. Dennis going to try to reverse the pitch. And it's going to be a loose ball. Looks like East Central will control near mid mid midfield. There's Morgan Dennis heading it back, but East Central with control. Tries to send it ahead. Had somebody just a little too tall. And Mary Kate will come up and scoop that one up easily. So ICC with it, East Central starting to swing a little bit of momentum their way. ICC has controlled the time of possession for the first part of this first half, but now East Central starting to settle down a little bit and get things going on their side of the pitch. And that's going to be out of bounds, last touch by East Central. Jaggers was tackled on the play. Are they going to hope they're going to call it a foul, actually, I believe. So Caroline will get set to put a foot into this one. Sends it towards midfield. East Central tries to clear it. It's loose on the pitch right now, and it's going to eventually go and settle with Addison Meadows. Meadows sneaks it over the middle. That's going to be down to Christie. ICC back over to... Christie swings it out wide. That's going to be Mallory Scott. Scott just quickly swings it back out. I believe that's Bethancourt who has switched sides of the pitch. Shoots and is stopped. Good shot from distance that time, but an easy save for Gillian. So the ball is going to be bounced around. Neither team really controlling it right now as it's sent back to midfield. And this is going to be Alex Stevens coming up and lets it settle and controls. Bethancourt with it across the way. Tries to send it up to Deanna Christie, and it is taken away by East Central. Christie comes up, applies some pressure on the keeper to force her to get rid of it and make a decision in a hurry. So ICC maintaining possession. Easily could be called a handball that time. The official almost started to call it, but decided to let him play. And so ICC now reversing the side of the pitch. This is going to be Maya Richardson with it. Richardson tries to go ahead, but a nice defensive play by East Central's Patterson to take it away. Patterson reverses it over now. This is going to be Langham with it. Langham on the wing. Tries to go for the cross. And just too far. Good idea. Looking for Wellington that time. Wellington trying to get the header. And just could not get to it. Just about a half a step too slow. It looks like we'll have more substitutions getting set to come in the game. Yes, there is. And this will be for ICC number 11, Audrey Wilson. And for East Central number 32, Carrington Payne. 
Those are your substitutions coming into the contest being brought to you by Little Caesars. Little Caesars here in Fulton. Jason Ellis had a chance to meet with him the other day and told me about an exciting new store they're going to be opening there in Hamilton, Alabama. So anybody that might be watching in the Hamilton, Alabama way, just know you're going to have a lot of great pizza options coming your way thanks to Jason Ellis and Little Caesars. They're just across the line. Well, Caroline just let that one go between her legs on purpose. So Mary Kate could scoop that one up. East Central has really moved their defense up here. And a nice job by Bethancourt just to kind of weave her way through three different defenders and sends it ahead. Going to be a foot race here, and it's just going to be cleared out of bounds by East Central. Boy, fancy dribbling that time by Bethancourt. Just let her just a step too far looking for Deanna Christie down the side. And East Central clears and allows the defense to reset. Coming, on, coming up on 27-30 here in the first half. Toss in. That's going to be Godden with it on the side. Getting a little bit of the business over there. And had it deflected out of bounds off the leg of East Central. So ball cleared back. Stevens will control. Going to drop it back to Jackers and allow the Lady Indians to reset here. Bethan Court sends it across the middle to Scott. Scott had that one kind of deflected off. We'll see if that's going to result in a corner or, nope, goal kick for East Central. <coughs> and we're being joined in the ICC Foundation broadcast booth by Coach Mike Sullivan, who will be he and his Indians will be playing in the night cap, so we'll kind of just get an in-game interview here with Coach Sullivan as you watch what goes on here on Let's Go ICCTV.com. Sully, first off, thanks for joining us here uh, just before getting ready for your match this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great, beautiful day for soccer, so hopefully it's going to end up being a good day. Well, Sully, let's just go ahead and talk about the year so far. Uh, still in the mix for the playoffs. Uh, had a slight setback at Hines. Extremely, extremely tough place to play, but uh, a good day to rebound here against East Central. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hines is always one of those places that, you know, you hate to go play because they just have such a great environment and they're a good team. And it's tough, but, uh, you know, hopefully teams feel the same way when they come up here. So we'd like to use that to our advantage today. But, yes, yeah, so far, I mean, we're still sitting in great shape. We're in second. And, uh, you know, which would allow us to host a first-round playoff game if that's where we end up. So that's what we're shooting for, and we'll see what happens. Well, so they just break down the division uh, this year. Of course, it's always extremely competitive. Uh, this year, men and women, extremely competitive. But uh, both the men, and Lady Indians and you, second place right now, making a push for that, uh, hosting that first round. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, girls are doing great. They're sitting in second. And, uh, you know, we're in second as well. Right now you got Hines. Uh, above us with 12 points we have 10 east central has seven and then holmes has six so you've really got four teams really fighting tooth and nail for those three uh, top three spots and uh it's going to come down to the end i mean today will probably go a long way towards determining you know what's going to happen and the same with the girls you know uh, east central's nipping at their heels so it's going to be a big day for both teams we're still scoreless here with about 25 minutes to go we had a substitution into the match for ICC. Number 22, Brooke Wilson, replaced Maya Richardson uh, in that last break as well. Well, Coach, uh, you guys, they're beat up and bruised, uh, to say the least, but uh, they have not quit fighting and quit battling for you all season long. Yeah, I mean, absolute testament to our overall roster. Uh, we've barely had the same lineup for any match this year, and uh, the freshmen have really stepped up and, uh, you know, done a good job. Unfortunately, most of our injuries have been to our backline players which certainly makes it hard, but, uh, you know, we fought through and we've only, uh, you know, we've only lost one of our last seven games. So, I mean, we've been, we've been in a good place and a lot of these younger kids are getting some good experience as we move forward. Well, coach, that was one thing you talked about during the preseason. You thought, you know, you've had some really talented teams, but you thought from top to bottom, this might be the most uh, depth you've had on the team in quite a while. And it's proven in to come in to be a big factor for you guys this season. Yeah, unfortunately, I was right. <laughs> um, I didn't really want to find the out if I was right or wrong, but we, we have definitely found out the answer to that question. Uh, you know, we've had games where we've only had 16 healthy field players, so we've definitely been tested, but, uh, you know, we've answered most of the bells, and, you know, even at Hines, they, they really got on us in the first half, and then we got it figured out in the second half. We played much, much better, and, yeah, unfortunately, you can't start in the second half. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> 
So it, uh, it was a good learning experience in a tough environment because, you know, if we have to travel to the playoffs somewhere, it hurt. hopefully will pay a lot of dividends, you know, for that playoff match if we can make it there. Absolutely. And, of course, the opening round of the playoffs, I believe, is on October the 24th, which will be a Wednesday. Uh, if the Lady Indians find some way to uh, – finish top in the north and advance to the state tournament. Of course, the state tournament would be here, and Sully, that would be a huge advantage because one unique thing about soccer is no pitch is the same. you got some that are artificial, you got some that are large, some that are small, and when you are at home, you do have some of those advantages. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the girls' biggest fans are the men's team. Yes. <laughs> uh, without a doubt, because if they could uh, pull that off, that would be super exciting for us to hopefully have a chance to get there, and then if we can get there, is to play at home so that would be big for both of us we had a trio of subs just checked into the contest Allie Barnett for ICC Kelly Vaughn and Haley Hutcherson for East Central 0-0 still your score 22-45 to go here in the first half we're talking with coach Mike Sullivan inside coach's corner being brought to you by Little Caesars well coach let's talk about some of those Bank of Oklahoma keys to victory this afternoon whenever you face off with East Central what's it going to take for the Indians to come away with a W well, I mean, we got to come out of the gate hard. I mean, we can't come out slow because that was our problem at Heinz the other night. Uh, you know, we got to finish our opportunities. I mean, the one thing that we have not had any problems with this year is scoring goals. You know, we've scored 40 goals on the season, which we're averaging well over three goals a game. So, you know, if we could stay in that mindset of, you know, continuing to get a lot of chances and putting them away, you know, we're a tough team to beat, even if we give up a goal or two. Um, so, I mean, the key is, you know, to continue to create the good chances and then finish them when we do get them. Defensively, they've got some good players we've got to, you know, keep our eyes on. Number 23 is a great player. They'll be up top, super fast. And then a couple other guys in their center midfield area that, you know, they're going to make them dangerous. We had them down 3-0 at their place. And the biggest thing about them, I would say, is that they fought back and tied us up. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a good testament to them, being down 3-0 and not throwing the towel in. So we got our work cut out for us. They're a good team. And those were your Bank of Oklahoma keys to victory being brought to you by John Herod and the fine folks out at the Bank of Oklahoma. Also, he talked about some of the uh, get to know your foe being brought to you by ICC Baptist Student Union. They meet Monday nights at 707, Wednesdays at lunch. All they ask is bring $2 and a friend. Also, don't forget to bring $2 for that friend. And that was a going to be a foul whistle on Audrey Wilson at midfield. Uh, Sully. You look at Audrey, and she's one of those players as a coach you like to have because she's aggressive, but plays in control and when as aggressive as she is, almost that enforcer mentality. Oh, absolutely. She uh, she plays that center of the mid, of the mid pretty hard. She will uh, she will give the other team the business. There's no doubt about it. She's she's fiery out there. She's been she's been a good player for him for sure. I mean, okay. so so far they look they look pretty good. I mean, this is a this has been a good effort for him so far. I think if they keep working, something's going to fall for him. So it's going to be sent towards the box. Wilson breaks that one up. East Central, though, gets a foot on it, sends it ahead, and then it's going to be easily scooped up by Grayson. Well, I know that uh, you and Coach Strother work closely together, uh, both with the teams kind of sharing strategies and things like that. Uh, just talk about some of the things that Strother may have talked about coming into today's matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for them was to try and get that opening goal because they, both these teams do not give up a lot of goals for sure. Uh, I think East Central's given up less than 10 in the year. And I know that David was talking the other day that I don't believe they've given up more than a goal or two in the last five games. So, I mean, this is a game where one goal could be the difference. And, you know, getting out on top early, you know, which it's not early anymore, mm -hmm. but getting out on top first is, is always a big thing, whether it's men's or women's. So I know that's one of his goals, but control the pace of the game and try and create some chances and get one. Yeah, they had some opportunities early, but uh, just could not quite cash in on them. As East Central, I believe this will be maybe a corner kick coming in or possibly a uh, toss in. I couldn't see where. Say he didn't really signal. Almost like the uh, referees from last night. Uh, we kick an extra point on the football game last night, Sully. Both officials just walk out, don't show no good, don't show it was good. <laughs> Go up and talk to the head referee, and eventually just the scorekeeper put the points on the board, and <laughs> you they said that. play on. Um, well, last night was a big game for the uh, football boys, I saw. Most definitely picked up a 68-28 win over uh, Northeast, the rivals. Uh, Northeast doesn't have a soccer team, so uh, I guess it's kind of more Heinz. That's yeah. uh, really the rivalry between ICC and our soccer teams. You know the truth with the men's soccer. It's kind of like everybody's a rival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, all the games are – I mean, there's 10 teams in the league, and 
honestly, most of the games are kind of games where if you don't show up, you can lose. Mm -hmm. Everybody can beat everybody. Everybody's got a quality team. So, you know, the rivalries just kind of get created yeah. that way. But, you know, there is something about the kind of Jackson area and, say, the Tupelo area. Because mm -hmm. you take Tupelo High School, who ends up playing Brandon or Madison or Northwest every year in the playoffs. So, this could be dangerous. Nice uh, touch that time by Bethencourt, but just could not quite squeeze it ahead. Now Jackers is going to try to send it up to Barnett. Uh-oh. Here we go, an opportunity for Christie. Christie lets it settle, sends it across the middle. Oh, good idea, but a great defensive play that time by East Central to break that one up. And Sully is just one of those, you kind of feel like the Lady Indians are just a step away from one of these breaking through. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm feeling here. I, w I want Deanna to get a little greedy, though. Yeah. She's got a great shot on that one right there. It, ended up being, it was a good pass, but you almost want to see that player be a little greedy, take another touch, and hit a shot. Uh, your, your people up top, that's, you know, you, you always mess around and laugh with them. You're like, yeah. you have one job. <laughs> <laughs> your job is to score the goals. So, but, uh, yeah, it feels like they're just a, you know, a step away. They're coming, they're coming at them pretty hard and throwing some numbers at them. Bethancourt sends this one ahead. going to be a foot race in Barnett. Couldn't quite get to it in time. East Central will clear it out wide. There's 17 and a half minutes to play here. We're talking with Coach Mike Sullivan here in the ICC Foundation broadcast booth. Substitutions coming to the game here. Looks like three for ICC. That's going to be number four, Ferris Bradley. Number five, Morgan Dennis checking back into the game. And number 19, Grace Fowley coming into the contest. And I believe it's number eight, Callie Helen McLean checking in for East Central. Those substitutions being brought to you by the ICC Wesley Foundation. So Fowley will toss this one in. Barnett with it. Drops it back to Grace. Sends it back to Barnett. Up the middle they go to Christie. Christie fires. And it's still being batted around. Barnett tries to stick it through. And East Central just not <laughs> giving ICC anything easy. Well, that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier. These teams don't give up a lot of goals. So... It's going to be that kind of game. I feel like one, two goals is definitely going to be enough to win it if you keep giving the defensive effort that they've been giving all year. So with 16-22 left to play, Neil Neal, steal your score. Here between ICC and East Central, the first of two matchups this afternoon here on LetsGoICCTV.com. Once again, I do want to apologize if uh, I sound a little tired or a little off uh, battling a cold all week. And I do appreciate Sully, you coming up and – Helping out, uh, made it through just about all the football game last night for having one of those coughing spells again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I joke with uh, Lee Adams, of course, Lee and Raphael and I uh, have some TV background. I think uh, we've got the CBS special every week with our football teams this year. We can't get a game done inside three and a half, three forty-five. <laughs> so uh, that game last night uh, lasting an extremely long time. But when you beat the rival 68-28, yeah, you don't mind that. I'm sure that was uh... – a pretty enjoyable for the boys um i mean i don't even know how to equate that in soccer terms <laughs> yeah is it, uh, that's a nine to two win <laughs> yeah yeah that's one of those where you're just hoping to get through the night without anything bad happening with right. frustrations <laughs> on the field another substitution coming into the game here maya richardson will check back in for icc so icc will toss this one in and it's going to be taken at midfield by east central Quickly ahead, shot. East Central, and this is on goal, but a nice save that time as that was Mary-Kate Grayson. Good help on the defense to force that one a lot further out than it looked like it was going to be. And made an easy save that time for Mary-Kate. Yeah, well, in both our leagues, that's that's the kind of shot if you're going to give up. that's Those are the ones that yeah. you feel comfortable that your keeper's going to save them from 20, 25 yards out. So you don't mind giving those up. So ICC with it. And East Central takes it away. Remind you to stay tuned to the Little Caesars Halftime Show. We'll have uh, the ICC All-American Band's performance from earlier this season coming your way. So that ball's going to be poked out of bounds. We'll be staying with ICC. Yeah, I heard there was quite the battle of the bands last night after the game. Uh, it was rocking for about 30 minutes after the game last night. Uh, and so much so that President Allen just sat back and enjoyed the show and even got a selfie <laughs> with the band after it was all said and done. So uh, it's one of those, he was like, wow. He's like, is this what y'all do every time? This is going to be fun. Uh-oh. He's central with the opportunity here. And that's a foul. they're going to call it a foul in that situation. 
maybe just a little bit extra on the flop, but it will uh, result in an opportunity here for East Central. So a dangerous opportunity for EC coming up. Sometimes the foul where this one's sitting, and maybe more so for the men, but sometimes it's too close. Yeah. It's almost like you don't have enough room to move the ball the way you want to. So hopefully that'll be the case here, but this is a very dangerous opportunity for sure. I believe this is going to be Aubrey Patterson on to attempt this. So an opportunity here for the East Central sends it and save. Nicely done that time by Mary Kate Grayson. Got a pretty good shot on goal that time. Just nothing tricky right at the keeper. Yeah, those are the ones you hope for. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that don't swerve into the corner. And we, so, and we, so we, you've had something like that where it's just the sheer mathematics of being that close yeah. and having people in front of you, you just can't can't work the ball enough to get any juju on it, I guess you can say, to try to get it and sneak one in. Yeah, we've, we've got a guy that can really, really hit him. Our, the guy from Brazil, Luan uh -huh. Balastiri, he can hit him, I'm telling you. You give him a little bit of room, and he can bend that around anything. So nice. We'll hope for a couple of those for us today. Yeah, say we'll take about three or four of those this afternoon. As Coach Sullivan alluded to, all these teams still in the chase for the playoffs. So every match imported from here on out for both the Lady Indians and the Indians. Ball yeah. is out of bounds and back to East Central. I mean, absolutely true. It, it, every game could change the entire outlook of the division. And a whistle. And another opportunity coming up here for East Central. He's going to mark them back a little bit further. So apparently he's just going to let them play until the play was kind of stopped. So back-to-back -back, uh, opportunities here for East Central. And this one right here, so it's going to be a little bit easier to make a little bit more dangerous coming at this angle and a little bit further out. Yeah, they're probably going to look to cross this one and get it on somebody's head. Looks like it's a little too far. There it is, and that was just a little too strong and too far. So another opportunity to miss there for East Central. Neil Neal is your score. ICC and East Central with about 11 and a half to go until halftime. More substitutions into the match here. This is going to be number 16 for ICC, Caroline Jaggers. Number 7, Francisca Yayos. And 20. 20. I recognize that, oh, yeah, that 20. girl. Brittany Sullivan <laughs> checking in. I've, I've heard of her. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, of course, for those that may not know, that is Coach Sullivan's daughter. Uh, for some reason, when Shannon played here, I wanted to call her Brittany all the time, and I have to make sure I don't call her Shannon. Uh, so, because uh, I'll be honest, Shannon got me one time for calling her Brittany. <laughs> well, I know she's actually watching right now. She's uh, she's dealing with a few things, and uh, we want to wish her well. But absolutely, uh, she's uh, she she was definitely going to watch her sister play today. So. Uh, I just want to say hello to her, and uh, hopefully she'll be able to keep watching and watch the guys play too. Absolutely, and hopefully they'll be able to watch a pair of wins this afternoon. Corner opportunity coming up here for East Central. They've had more and more opportunities here in the latter stages of the first half, just have not been able to cash in on them yet. That one's sent across the middle, Ooh. dangerous, <laughs> and somehow just weaves through traffic and nobody. The Maybe. One, the one thing yeah. as a coach you do not want to see is a corner kick that bounces three times in the box. Yeah. That will make you very unhappy as a, because of coach. I think, if anything, Fowley may have been able to deflect that enough to sort of knife it away from the rest of the teammates, and East Central will have it now. Well, I see our good luck charm has just showed up. Dr. Allen is now uh, on the uh, grounds. Yes. Uh, I told him, I said, you, you got to keep coming to all our games. Uh, <laughs> every game you've been to, we've, we've had a W, so I'm hoping that will continue the trend. So, so what we're gonna, so what we're gonna do is all of a sudden we're gonna look over and his golf cart's gonna have four flat tires, so he can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna pay for him a hotel room to come watch <laughs> us on the road. <clears throat> Sullivan with it now is gonna swing it out wide. This is Fowley. Fowley pokes it ahead. This is gonna be Francesca trying to get to it and just couldn't get to it as East Central clears it out. So tell me how you say her last name. We've got it as a. Uh, pronunciation guide of Yeyeos. And that's just by us listening to how she said it. <laughs> so that's probably not even close. That is one of the most complicated last names I've seen. Yes. Next to Madejo Apakarok on the football team about four <laughs> years ago because Apakarok was not spelled anywhere in the zip code of the way it sounded. 
Uh, we, I guess we've only got Luan to yeah. worry too much about. Our Australian kid, that's that's pretty plain. Jay. Yeah, Ryan right. Parker's, Ryan easy Parker's to say. pretty easy. <laughs> Luan Balachete, I think, is how I say it. It's probably wrong. That's that's pretty much correct, as far <laughs> as far as I know. I end up calling him Ballesteri all the time, which is wrong. <laughs> uh, but so, so he, does, he doesn't care. <laughs> the, Sully and I are two guys. Where you can call us wherever you want, want, just don't call us late for supper. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. A lot of contact. Official going to let them play. Good no call that time by the referee, and neither player got any advantage after that one. Ball is going to be cleared back to midfield. East Central with it now. After ICC dominated the time of possession in the first part of the first half, East Central has flipped the coin here and pretty much dominated the time of possession here in the closing moments of the first half. Neil Neal, though, is still your score in this North Division battle between ICC and East Central. ICC in the white tops, East Central in the gold and black tops. It's definitely been a back and forth affair for sure. I mean, it was like you said, it's been it's very much slanted towards ICC in the first 20 and lately maybe a little bit more the other way. So it's been back and forth, which is kind of what I expected. And East Central is going to clear that one out across the way. Not a bad crowd making their way out here on a Friday afternoon. Earlier start than normal, mainly because it's starting to get darker a little bit earlier than we're accustomed to. So you want to make sure you're able to get in these matches as a substitution into the match. Now is going to be Audrey Wilson checking out will be Emma Godden for ICC. But we ran into that a couple of times before we ultimately made the decision to start moving some of these matches up earlier in the year to that one and three mark uh you just get to a point where you just can't see anymore yeah i mean uh realistically to to play properly i mean after six o'clock it's it's starting to get a little dark mm -hmm. and that's you, you don't want any darkness when you're playing important games like these so even if both games go to overtime we should be okay you know time wise icc with it now sullivan's going to send it ahead that's bradley Bradley back to Sullivan. Sullivan sends it ahead. Ferris Bradley out on the wing trying to sprint down and chase that one down. That was a good ball into the corner. Oh. And just could not quite get it to go. Good job that time by East Central taking away the angle from Ferris Bradley. As you said, a good touch, a good send that time. Just once again could not quite convert. Remind you to stay tuned. We'll have the Little Caesars halftime report. We'll give you some sonic stats, and so far there's none to report. <laughs> it's and definitely one of, been one of those games. And then just a miscue there by East Central. Lost her balance. Ferris Bradley gets it back, who, by the way, Ferris is in the running uh, for the final uh, homecoming court, a chance to become a homecoming queen. If not, she will be a member of the homecoming court. That's on October the 28th. Yeah, I've heard we got two girls. Uh, yeah, Hannah Covington yeah. as well. It's going to be a freshman made. It's always nice to have two members of the soccer team on that. So coming up on five and a half to play here in the first half. ICC with the toss in. Bradley gets it, pokes it ahead, sneaks it through. Ooh, keeper. If she was asleep, that one's in. As it come off the hip of her own teammate, but was able to find it and send it down the pitch. Dennis clears that one back. This is going to be number 22, Brooke Wilson with it now. Up the pitch, they go to Wilson. Sullivan with it now is going to push it ahead. Broken up nicely that time by East Central. Good idea by Brittany as Allie Barnett had the speed to beat the defender. Just the ball took a funny hop and just could not sneak its way through. And now ICC with it again, Barnett. Trying to weave her way through. Now sends it to the backside. This is ball. Fran with it. And just couldn't quite get to it. That was a great ball. Good cross that time. And I tell you what, if Sarah Gilliland does not make that quick decision to come up and make a play on the ball, that could have been a dangerous opportunity for ICC. But that's just kind of been the uh, tell of the tape here for both teams. Close, but no cigar. It's going to be one of those you don't expect, I feel like. It's going to be one of those games where going to be a cheapo goal or a set piece goal or something like that but uh i think whoever gets the first one's going to have a good good advantage now east central quickly ahead here comes the opportunity here in jaggers wisely sends that one into the parking lot bouncing around in what we have come to call uh what is it uh, lake firewater <laughs> snake canyon yeah. maybe snake canyon yes it's always an adventure you watch people that uh 
look at the ball, think about going down in there. They're like, no, I don't think I want to. It's best to send a kid in there. <laughs> yeah. Firewater Creek, that's what we call it. So you got somebody invading on your property over there. See somebody tailgating. Yeah. Got the grill fired up across the way. Yeah, you got to like that. Yeah. That's first, the first time say, I've seen that happen. That's what I was going to say. First time I've uh, noticed anybody do that. Of course, uh, we talked about the crowd we were looking at across the way. Uh, there's always a big crowd there on the tree line as uh, uh, shadow or sh shade seating is a premium here. That's kind of exciting to see some people start tailgating. Hopefully we can get uh, even more of that. And what a beautiful day to do it here in mid-70s. Breezy. We're in the shade up here in the ICC Foundation broadcast booth. Pokes that one ahead. Ooh, very Ooh. dangerous as that was number 32. Carrington Payne coming in late. Mary Kate Grayson. I don't know if she saw her because yeah. uh, she just went diving head first as Payne was almost getting set to kick the ball. That Fearless. Def that definitely looked more dangerous at the end than I thought it was going to be at yeah. the beginning. <laughs> so that ball's going to be rolling back and out of bounds, and I believe it'll be ICC ball. Coming up on two and a half to play here in the first half of play, Adam Gore. And Coach Mike Sullivan here in the ICC Foundation broadcast booth. We do appreciate everyone tuning in here on Let's Go ICC TV.com. Sully, I'm just going to put the microphone on you if my voice goes away in the men's game. <laughs> Sometimes that might not be the best idea. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little broadcasting secret. Uh, I typically don't have my NAT sound running <laughs> during the men's match. <laughs> the, you know, the men's matches get a little intense from it does. time to time. It does. Uh, but uh, that's just all everybody's passion coming yes. through. That passion and will to win. You got Rafael Henry up top running the camera here for us on Let's Go ICCTV.com. Lee Adams is on the side shooting photos of today's matches. You can see those photos on ICCimages.com. You can download the digital download for $1, or you can order various packages there at iccimages.com. If you're a former player from the past uh, maybe three or four years, maybe five, uh, you can go back and see some of your photos from when you played. And sent from distance that time, wide and off the side of the net, and we stay at Neil Neal. We do invite you to search Itawamba CC Soccer on Facebook or Let's Go ICC on Facebook. Also, uh, ICC Soccer on Twitter and Instagram. And Let's Go ICC on Twitter and Instagram for all your updates on ICC Soccer and ICC Athletics. Nicely done that time. The ball is deflected away, and Mary Kate made the quick, wise decision to come up and grab that one before the ball went out of bounds, resulting in a corner kick. All right, we're in good shape. Let's get to that. So coming up on the closing seconds of the first half, that ball is going to go out of bounds and it'll be ICC ball. I hear Brother Chris has uh, yes. arrived. Brother Chris, a proud supporter of ICC athletics and ICC soccer. Sully, being the closing seconds of this one, just your final thoughts and maybe uh, some second half adjustments that you might like to see out of Lady Indians here. Well, you know what? I mean, I think what they've been doing is, is working. I think they've just got to get a little sharper. Because uh, they've been continuing to play, you know, breaking through their midfield line and hitting those forwards and those wingers. And I think that's going to continue to work for them. They just, you know, they've had some creatively good chances. I think if they could finish some of these, you know, they'd be in better shape. But uh, I think he's probably going to, you know, try to stay the course and uh, kind of keep going with what he's been doing. One second left, and that's going to do it here. And we're scoreless at the end of the first half of play. Coach, thank you for coming up and uh, spending some time with us. I know you got to get the guys ready here in the second half. We're going to take a break and come back with more Little Caesars halftime show right after this on Let's Go ICCTV.com. I got a great deal on pizza. You went to Little Caesars and got an extra most pesters with the most cheese and pepperoni for just six bucks. I got a terrible deal on pizza. Give me that. Get the most cheese and most pepperoni at the nation's best price. Little Caesars, $6 extra most bestest. Pizza, pizza.
Hit tune Conda. Also featured on trumpet are Lydia Short of Pontotoc, Brandon York of Amory, Danielle Creighton from Tupelo, Jenna Harris Mantachi, Armando Quinones from Pontotoc, Daniel Torres from Tupelo, Holly Jones from Pontotoc, and Michael Collins from South Pontotoc.
Jackson. Color guard captains are Valerie Blake of Itawamba, Amaya Lee of Aberdeen. Percussion captains are Logan Freeman from Corinth and Jeremy Hendricks from Tupelo. ICC All-American Band Directors are Ryan Thomas. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends. And stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you wherever you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. When I grow up, I'm going to redefine pizza. One that will change the history of pizza forever. A pizza with the most cheese and the most pepperoni. This is my dream, and I can do it. Because my mom and dad said I can accomplish anything. And I will do great things in life. Sorry, kid, it's been done. But my dream- Introducing Little Caesar's Extra Most Bestest Pizza. A large pizza with the most cheese and the most pepperoni for just six bucks. Pizza, pizza. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're just moments away from starting the second half here between ICC and East Central. Might help I actually switch to the camera. We are scoreless here in the after the first half of play. ICC will now be working left to right on your television screen. And you'll have East Central working right to left. East Central in the gold and black tops. ICC in the white tops. East Central got much more aggressive there in the second half as they were able to come up and sort of dominate the time of possession. ICC started out that way. So the ball is going to be deflective, deflected forward, and now we do have a new keeper in net here. That's, this will be Haley McGill. McGill getting the start in the second half after Mary Kate Grayson did well in the first half. But that's just kind of what uh, the Lady Indians have done all season long is just ro rotate between keepers on each half. Looks like this may be a toss in coming in here. Looks like Sarah Gilliland will stay in here for East Central in net in the second half. Mallory Scott, fancy footwork. Trying to go through, but good job by East Central. Clearing in a hurry here. Both these teams, very solid defensive squads, and it showed in the first 45 minutes. As each team had very few opportunities, but when they did, the defenses did a great job of collapsing and taking away any easy lanes for a possible goal. So it's going to be interesting to see which team can find that first breakthrough here in the second half. Bethancourt with it now. Sends it ahead. Christy had it, but then lost it. East Central gets it back. And then the ball goes back to ICC. Anything you can do, I can do better. Type of mentality here between these two squads. Scramble for it across the way. Ball is poked free and it's going to go out of bounds. Last touched by ICC. We do appreciate everyone tuning in here on Let's Go ICC TV.com. Once again, do apologize if uh, sound a little different, a little under the weather. It's been battling a cold all week and uh, just pushing through so we can get these matches broadcast and brought your way here this afternoon in Fulton. We do appreciate Coach Mike Sullivan coming in uh, there in the latter parts of the first half to preview his matchup coming up in the nightcap as well as talk about the Lady Indians and maybe some of the adjustments he might like to see them do here uh, in the second half to be able to come away with a victory. Bethancourt with it now. Tries to send it ahead. Good idea, but East Central just steps in front of that one and takes away the angle once again from ICC. Beautiful day for soccer here in Fulton. Of course, uh, weather's supposed to get 
and I guess uh, a lot tougher or a lot worse as we progress through the weekend. So we do encourage everyone to stay weather conscious and be safe over the weekend. Right now it says temperatures 83 degrees, feels like 84. Humidity right about 54%, which that's low for this part of the world for uh, maybe some of our international parents that are watching and don't realize you get about 120% humidity here in the south all the time, especially in the state of Mississippi. Uh, yeah, we talked about it. Uh, Weather-wise, rain supposed to be moving in Saturday night through staying through what looks to be just about next Thursday. Maybe getting a break about the middle of the week on Wednesday, but uh, rain for sure staying through through Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, everyone, please uh, keep an eye on that weather as it's supposed to get a little worse as we progress throughout the rest of the week. Morgan Dennis with it now. He's going to send it ahead. That's going to be Meadows. Meadows weaving her way through traffic. Sends it ahead. Here's Christy. Christy has an opportunity. Shoots it from distance. And yes! Deanna Christy with the big time goal there and the Lady Indians take a 1-0 lead. Sends it ahead. Here's Christy. Christy has an opportunity. Shoots it from distance. And yes! Deanna Christy. And a big time goal there for Christy as she sticks that one in. Going to try to find how to uh, kill the audio on my replay there. So ICC takes a one to nothing lead after that beautiful goal by Deanna Christie. And quickly, it's going to be a corner opportunity here for East Central on the other end. Christie is one of those that, uh, that's what Coach Sullivan was talking about there in the first half. He would love to see her have a little bit more of an aggressive mentality on her offensive attacks and she has a beautiful shot there went top shelf too tall for the keeper to get to back corner and it was good and icc leads it now one to nothing corner piece coming and it's going to go off the side of the net so one nothing is your score in favor of icc there's coming up on three and a half to play i didn't stop my scoreboard when the goal was made, so I'll have to let the clock on the let's go. game. And here's another opportunity here for Deanna Christie. Christie, can she make it two in a row? No, she sends it back to the middle. Mallory Scott tries to drop it back to Meadows. Hey, that's the right idea, guys. Stay with it. And Stay with it. East Central able to reset. Pressure white, pressure white. Here comes the Lady Indians trying to build on this 1-0 lead here. We talked about it. Anybody gets that first goal could be enough to win it the way these two teams have been playing defensively this afternoon. Two goal lead would be huge. Hey! Come off. Mallory Scott tries to send a cross here. It's sent too far. And it's going to try to be chased down and does get it before it goes out of bounds, but. Just sat there and waited for the East Central player to get to it. So EC will have it now, trying to race down the field. ICC leading this one 1-0. One Stop the ball! And there's Emma Godden. Great job by Emma to come and take that one away. Tries to send it ahead. East Central gets it back now, and it's going to be... Good, we're out. Better, let's go! Cleared out by ICC. Tries to send it ahead. Good idea. Christy was streaking through that time. Hey, if that's the run, forward. Listen, one shows, one goes. Okay? And then you just fill in each other's face. And so, East Central with it now. Sending down the pitch, trying to go to the corner. Sends it ahead, and Jaggers just e easily. Breaks that one up. Get it up here, Sam. 
tries to send it ahead. That one's going to be too far, so the ball will go back now to East Central. 37-33 and counting here in this one. Once again, a special thank you to Dave Edwards. Always just Johnny on the spot when we have some issues coming up with our uh, replays or anything here. He can just quickly type in from all the way out in L.A. Gotta got love technology. And as soon as I uh, sent him that message about the replay volume, then I, I remembered exactly where it was. So that's my bad, Dave. I know you're in the system right now. So uh, that's on me. I forgot that's how you turn down the replay. I kept trying to turn down the uh, marker on the left. I know everybody that's watching right now just can't see what I'm talking about. But there's a marker to the left of where we do the replays. That actually slows down the replay. But, yep, I see where it is now, Dave. So I appreciate that very much. That ball is going to go back out of bounds and back to ICC. So they're going to toss this one in. And this is Deanna Christie getting the business. This should result in a corner kick, and it will. President Allen showing off a little footwork down there, retrieving the ball for the Lady Indians. Christie getting set to send in this corner piece. There you see Dr. Allen, the new president at ICC, enjoying a spot in the shade, taking in today's matches. They're going to go short with it this time, and... Get it back to Christy. Christy sends it inside and out. Oh, just too high that time. Good idea. See former Indian Zach Ellis in the house. Coming to support the Indians this afternoon. Always good to see former ICC student athletes come back to campus to support their former team and former teammates. Of course, Zach was a member of the men's soccer team, also a member of the men's football team. Good job. Stop it right here. Has gotten with it now. Weaving her way through traffic. Pokes it ahead to Christy. Can yeah. Christy do it again? No way. They're going to call her offside. Hey, horrible, job, horrible right here, call. And the right. line judge looks at David and said, just by half a foot, there's no way she was offsides. She did not release until the ball was sent forward. Granted, they did not go in net, but if it did have, if it would have, that would have been a horrible, horrible, horrible call by the referee to negate what would have been a goal for the Indians. Because you're allowed to go past the line once the ball is sent forward. And that's what exactly what Deanna did. Either way it goes, now East Central with the ball. ICC clears nice job, it back. Nice job, EC will maintain, maintain possession. And it goes out of bounds back to ICC. So the ball is being batted around easily. Could have been called a handball that time. One of those where I think the official said play was not disturbed by it. So he said play on in that situation. Ball is going to be sent down. And is it going to go out of bounds? Just barely. I thought for a second it might stay in bounds as the East Central player was kind of decelerating through the attempt. That ICC might have a chance to uh, sneak down and get that one. But instead it did go out of bounds. So to go back to East Central. My mom, Sue Gore, checking in to the broadcast, telling me to go get a shot. I got one Wednesday, so hopefully that uh, will kick in soon. I'm hoping just a good weekend of rest will uh, get me back on my feet. Let's go sit. And that was Bethancourt pushing it forward. Hey, numbers are off. It's 3v3. You got to 
East Central with it now. Going to have to hurry down the pitch and try to tie this one up, but nicely broken up that time by Jaggers. We'll send that one back and out of bounds to allow the defense to reset. Take a look at what's coming up at ICC. On October the 13th, the soccer teams will travel to Northwest before returning home on the 17th to take on Holmes. And then they'll wrap up the regular season with a pair of non-division matches. Uh, I believe the Lady Indians will play Southwest Tennessee and the men will play Andrew College for Sophomore Appreciation Day here in the final home match of the regular season. Playoffs start on October the 24th with the state, uh, or the, yeah, the state playoffs uh, semifinals on the 28th and the finals on the 29th. Of course, uh, if you're able to win those uh, championship, you'll advance on to the NJCAA Region 23 tournament. So uh, gonna be a lot of interesting finish here to the regular season for both the Lady Indians and the Indians. One nil is your lead after a beautiful goal made by Deanna Christie earlier. And now ICC sends that one ahead just a little too far. Morgan Dennis up was set with herself, knew she had a great opportunity. Just that ball jumped off her foot a little too hot that time. So now ICC controls on the 50-50 ball. That's Meyer Richardson with it. Leaves it up top to Bethancourt. Bethancourt weaving her way through traffic, drops it off now to Meadows. Meadows tries to reverse the pitch, does so to Morgan Dennis. Dennis sends it ahead and good job by East Central. Stepping in front of that one, taking away that passing lane. Great job though by Addison Meadows coming back and stepping in front of that one. East Central though, once again, being very stingy. Whenever you start attacking that goal, they're closing in on a hurry. And really takes away any breathing room, any passing lanes, any opportunities you might have. As that ball's gonna go out of bounds as Bertelson just could not quite catch up to it in time. Coming up on 30 minutes left in the contest, ICC leading one nil. East Central getting set to toss this one in. We talked about it, ICC eight and five on the year. They're closing in on most wins in a regular season. I believe they're four and one in the north. Right now in second place, a game ahead. Of course, they do points. Holmes four and zero, oh, ICC four and one, Northwest two and two, East Central one and three. So they're battling for that final spot in the playoffs here. Stop it right there. Stop it right there. And then Hines zero oh, and five. She didn't even touch her. Hey, turn it face. And so a foul was on ICC. Alex Stevenson a little upset on that call. Thought that the player, number 16, who has uh, spent a lot of time on the ground this afternoon, Kelly Vaughn, thought she might have oversold that play that time to draw the whistle. Either way it worked, though, if she did, as she was able to get the whistle blown. So a free kick coming up here for East Central. Sends it wide right. Wide right. And the ball is still not free. And this time cleared and ends up in the hands of Haley McGill. All right, let's turn the field white. Turn the field white. So McGill comes up and makes the save, and she'll get set to send this one. It's got Bethancourt going down the far side of the pitch. Sends it ahead, trying to find Deanna Christie. Christie had it, lost it for a second, was able to get it back. Now crosses over the middle. This is Meadows. Meadows weaving her way through traffic. Now goes out wide. And just too wide that time as... Gracie Burleson maybe probably should have took another step to let it settle. That's what Coach Strother's coming out saying. Be patient. Don't panic. Get you a good foot on that one. And she agrees. So a good coaching moment that time between Strother and Burleson. Substitution coming into the match here for ICC. This is going to be number 13, Brooke Younger. Checking out will be number 18, Cynthia Bethancourt. Checking in for East Central is Evan, uh, excuse me, Eva Foreign, even foreign, checking in for EC. Those substitutions being brought to you by Sonic of Fulton. And that ball's going to go out of bounds and it will stay with East Central. Well, Deanna Christie has been the difference maker so far in this contest. She scored earlier here in the second half a beautiful kick that went top shelf over the head of the keeper and found that back corner to give ICC the one nil lead here as the clock continues to run, coming up now on 27 and a half minutes to go in the contest. 
EC looking for that equalizer. ICC looking to see if they can't find that insurance goal to go up 2-0. Morgan Dennis with it now. Tries to reverse the field with it, and it's just going to go out of bounds. One of those where she might have just been trying to get rid of the ball since she was being hawked defensively by a pair of East Central players. So ICC with it now, working at midfield. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by East Central. ICC with it now looking to go to work. East Central takes it away. Up ahead they go, and Christie had to be careful that time. Didn't want to jump off sides. Good idea by ICC. Just had to play it safe. So a break there for East Central. One nil is your score. ICC with the lead. Talked about a pair of big division matchups between ICC and East Central this afternoon. The men will have the nightcap. The Lady Indians leading this one one nil after a goal by Deanna Christie early in the second half. Of course, we talked to Coach Sullivan, and we'll talk about it here. A big night for ICC last night as there's pair of substitutions coming in for East Central. Number 22, Caitlin Summerlin. And I believe that's number 10, Noel Ross checking in. But yeah, big win last night for the ICC football team. They knocked off Northeast, the rivals, 68 to 28. It was uh, the birthday of quarterback Dan Ellington. And Ellington, Dan Ellington, Threw for four touchdown passes, ran for two more, combined for over 500 yards of total offense against the rivals in that 68 to 28 victory there. Not a bad way to celebrate your birthday there, Dan Ellington. ICC football will be back in action next week. As they'll travel to Clarksdale, they'll take on Cahoma. That'll be a 6.40 start time for the Choice Pond pregame show. And a 7 o'clock First American National Bank opening kickoff there in Clarksdale. A division game, then ICC will travel to Mississippi Delta the next Saturday before coming back and hosting homes on October the 28th for homecoming. Of course, we've already touched on it. Uh, Lady Indian soccer team will have two members on the homecoming court, Hannah Covington will be a freshman maid, and Ferris Bradley is in the final runoff uh, for homecoming queen. That's expected to be announced uh, either later today or the beginning of next week. Uh, so ICC soccer well represented on this year's homecoming court. Speaking of ICC soccer, their next match will be at Northwest. And then they'll be back here against Holmes. That will possibly be our next uh, match up, but we said, you know, there are some uh, weather concerns for all the way through about uh, Wednesday, maybe Thursday of next week. So uh, you'll be sure and want to keep an eye on Let's Go ICC.com as well as follow us on Twitter at Let's Go ICC on Twitter for any changes to any of the schedules coming up here in the closing right, we weeks White. of the regular season. Hey, it's getting a little bit too slow again here, White. It's like ICC is getting set to send in a trio of subs the next opportunity. The heat of the day can start wearing down on some of these players, so wanting to keep some fresh legs in the match here. ICC trying to build on their one nothing lead. Sends it ahead. Deanna Christie on her high horse running here. Deanna, a chance to get her second goal of the match. Here she does. Hey, 
Deanna Christie with her second goal of the match, and it's a big one. Six it in the back of the net, and ICC takes a 2-0 lead, and that was a big goal there for Christie, the young lady out of Liverpool, England. And I know Phil and the family are loving it. Over in England, as ICC takes a two to Neil lead. So East Central now is gonna have to be a really aggressive to try to start making a push back in this one inside two and a half to play. So I let my clock on the screen catch up with the scoreboard clock. That ball's gonna be sent out of bounds. So it's going to be tossed in here over the top, and East Central will control. And the ball will go out of bounds back to East Central. So ICC will let that one clear back. 2 nil is your score. Now ICC with it, sends it ahead. Mallory Scott tried to skip it over to Christie, but was taken away by East Central. Ball is cleared back, Emma Godden clears it and then sent ahead. And East Central is gonna send it back. Anything you can do, I can do better type play here. It's a game of catch between the two teams. Now here comes East Central on the attack. He's trying to go wide, nothing there. Now fires on goal and just off the fingertips and this should result in a goal, or excuse me, corner kick coming up here by East Central. So big goal there, the second of the game by Deanna Christie. Make a big stop here. And ICC leads it now, two nothing. Corner's dangerous, but a great job by Haley McGill coming through traffic, reaching up and grabbing that one and making the play there. Good job by McGill coming up and making the stop and keeping it a 2 0 contest. Hey, good job there, Haley. Here we go. You've got more subs coming in. Number 19, Grace Valley. Number 11, Audrey Wilson. And number 8, Nikki Kessler. Checking into the contest here for ICC. Inside 20 minutes. And 24, Savannah Courtright, who, by the way, I think yesterday was her birthday, right? It was. So Savannah also celebrating a birthday yesterday. Be great to see her get a goal in the match and put us up 3 0. So ICC leading it 2 0. Inside 19 and a half minutes to play here, trying to pick up some very valuable points and stay in that chase for the top spot in the north and opportunity to possibly host the state tournament. If it is, that will be on October the 28th and 29th. If they finish in second, they'll host the opening round uh, play-in game, if you will, the state tournament here on October the 24th. So ICC with it. Sends it inside. This ball is kicked straight up. And Morgan Dennis comes in and tries to put a header on it and nearly puts a header on Kessler that time. The ball goes out of bounds and back to East Central. Well, if you're an ICC fan, knowing as good as this East Central team is, this clock can't run quick enough. That last goal by Deanna Christie, an insurance goal being brought to you by your Itawamba County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox. For all your insurance needs, stop by and see Joey at 710 South Adams Street. Good job. As Haley McGill comes up and makes the play. See the Indians 
All right, excuse me, that's East Central getting loose in the background as they'll have the next match coming your way here on Let's Go ICCTV.com. That one's scheduled to come your way at 3 o'clock. Up ahead they go. This one dangerous. Great job by Alex Stevens to come up and just get a toe on that one as that would have been a great opportunity there for East Central to put something strong on net. That one goes out of bounds. And East Central have a toss in coming here from the side. Stevens steps in front of that one again, just frustratedly sent forward. And that one's going to be cleared out by Jaggers. EC has it now. Trying to find something to go here. They trail 2-0. That one from distance going to go out of bounds, and it'll be a goal kick coming up here for ICC. So this will be Haley McGill getting set to send this one down the pitch. 2 0 is your lead. Seven minutes, excuse me, 17 minutes to play here in the contest. Sends it ahead, out of bounds. Once again, East Central does an outstanding job taking away passing lanes. Fortunately, you send it out a little bit wider than you think you need to. And forcing some turnovers. That was another prime example of one there. And they toss it in and is lost control of and out of bounds back to ICC. So anything you can do, I can do better here. Luckily for ICC, the better part of it is they've scored two goals. Both of those goals belonging to Deanna Christie. And this is going to be East Central with it. I'm going to pick it up as it rolls out of bounds and now they're going to throw it down the pitch. AC controls. Sends it ahead. Morgan Dennis steps in front of that one. Dennis pokes it forward. Nothing there. Oh. Hard contact. And they're going to say incidental contact. That was Hope Simmons who has checked into the matchup. If that was incidental contact, that's going to be incidental contact that Coach Sean Cannon would love to see out of his ICC football team. But Hope pop right back up without any issues as we got a substitution coming into the match here this is going to be number 21 and this is going to be hannah covington hannah a freshman out of south tillow we've already talked about her she is going to be a member of the homecoming court in three weeks representing the freshman class two nil is your score Fifteen, fifteen to go here. East Central takes it away. Grace Valley putting on a lot of pressure out there on the corner. Kicks it out of bounds. It'll be a toss in here. And the ball goes into the ditch. East Central calling for the ball on the far side. Haley McGill going over to get it. So this will be a toss in here for East Central. They trail 2 0, coming up on 14 and a half to play in the contest. That one's sent into the box, put her header on it, but just too wide. And that's going to be cleared out. Or scooped up, I should say, by Haley McGill. So McGill will punt this one down the pitch. Over the head of the East Central player. Now ICC with it, trying to send it ahead. A little too far that time, and it'll be an easy scoop up by Gilliland. She has gone the distance so far for East Central in net. EC controls that 50 50 ball. Morgan Dennis getting physical out there and knocks down the East Central player whistle is blown and they quickly put it back in play but there is the Indians to break that one up sends it ahead and Haley McGill is going to scope that one up good quick decision that time by Haley to come up and make a play on that one before the central player had enough time to close in on it and here comes East Central on the attack they trail 2-0 broken up nicely that time I believe that was Jaggers putting a foot on that one now Fowley with it Valley tried to quickly send it ahead, but just could not find a foot on it. It's going to be out of bounds. Last touch by ICC. 
Mind you, the guys game coming up next here on Let's Go ICCTV.com. We uh, will break away momentarily. Ball is just loose on the pitch. It was a foot race to get to it that time, and East Central will control. Over the top they go. East Central with an opportunity there and a nicely done that time by number 24. That's Savannah Courtright coming in and taking away that angle and negating what could have been an easy shot that time for EC. And it goes out of bounds, and ICC will control. So a goal kick coming up here off the foot of McGill. Sends it ahead. That's going to be Morgan Dennis. Dennis, nice feed up the field. They go to Fran. Let it settle. Comes back and gets it. Yeos is not down on the side, and it'll be ICC ball. So the toss in, and East Central steps in front of it and clears it out. Off the official that time. And that one deflected nicely that time by EC. This is going to be Sullivan who has checked into the contest. We'll send it out wide to Barnett. Alley trying to work. Nice spin move that time to get away from the defender. Sends it across the middle. Christie going for the hat trick. No, that one just a little too far wide as it hit the side of the net that time. Christie, you do like to see the aggressiveness out of Deanna on that one. 2 0, your score. Inside 11 minutes of play now in the contest. ICC with the lead over East Central. Up ahead, they go with it. We're going to reverse the pitch, trying to clear it out and move the ball up the pitch. ICC has done a pretty good job of controlling the ball and the time of possession the last few trips down the pitch. Court right working one-on-one -on -one defensively. Sends it ahead and nothing doing. Good cross that time, but just a little too far for Ashley Langham to catch up with. And the Indians get the ball. Kessler with it now. Drops it up top to Morgan Dennis. Dennis is going to leave it out wide back to Kessler. No, it's just going to go out of bounds. A little confusion between Barnett and Kessler, who was going to come up and get that one. And that one cleared out nearly up here in the ICC Foundation broadcast booth. Uh, so far, it knocked the limb out of the tree. So the ball sent right back out of bounds. Morgan Dennis will toss this one in. So the ball is loose on the pitch right now. ICC with it, but East Central regains possession. And then there's a nice job by Hannah Covington to come up and take that one away. Sends it ahead. Oh, good idea. Just number 15 that time stepped in front of it. Now here comes EC on the attack. Got the defender on her hip. Sends it ahead. Good job by Courtright to come up and force that one to be a little bit more difficult than she thought it would be. And ICC just trying to weave through traffic right now. This is Sullivan with it. Sullivan drops it off to Courtright. And now here comes, or no, excuse me, that was Covington. And now here comes EC on the attack. From distance, a header up and save. Nicely done that time by Haley McGill. See a replay of the save there. As we're back to live action, Sullivan comes up, had the ball kicked away, and East Central is going to try to clear it back and quickly turn it up the pitch. Eight and a half to play. ICC up two to nothing here over East Central. East Central is going to have to start getting a lot more aggressive as time is not starting to be on their side. Christie thought about it. Had it kind of blocked up that time. Good play defensively by East Central, but there's Ali Barnett to take it back. Barnett's going to try to bend it from distance, and it's going to be out of bounds off the 
hands of the keeper. Thought that one's really going to be more so off the side of the net, so it'll be a corner opportunity coming up here for ICC. So a chance to make this dangerous here off the corner kick if you're the Lady Indians could almost put this thing to bed. Inside eight minutes of play, 2 nil your score. ICC with the lead. Substitution coming into the match here for East Central is going to be number six, Aubrey Patterson. Christie sends it in. And they're going to send it back, say do it again, as they did not allow the defense to sit. One official put it in play. The other, the center ref did not. And so now basically just a do-over here for Deanna Christie. Christie getting set to put a foot into this one. And that one just a little too tall. And East Central will clear it out. EC will control. This is number seven, Langham with it. Nice job of settling, allowing her teammates to catch up with her. And then there's Brittany Sullivan taking it away. Nice job by Sullivan. EC though getting scrappy, knowing that time's against them here. They've got to do something to find a way to cut this 2-1 lead in half and maybe make a push late to see if they can find a way to tie this thing up. So the ball is out of bounds. It'll be a corner kick coming up here for East Central. All right, everybody, we will take a brief break and then come back here on Let's Go ICCTV.com for the men's game. That one, as we said, scheduled for 3 o'clock, and we might be on pace for that 3 o'clock start. EC's coach sprinting down to get the ball to try to speed things up here. Coming up on 6.15 to play. Corner piece on its way. And McGill goes up and just takes that one off the head of the East Central player. Great job by Haley McGill. And we stay at 2-0. Francesca sending Christy ahead. Good send here. Keeper's going to come up and, oh, just gets a foot on it before Deanna Christie can get to it. If Christy is just about a half a step quicker, she's got the easiest goal of her career if she doesn't elect to give it up to Allie Barnett, who is also down there. The keeper comes up and makes a decision and a half a step quick enough to make the right decision as the ball goes out of bounds back to ICC. Terry Williams, we talked about him not getting very many uh, offers in football up to these last few weeks, getting another offer that today from West Alabama. So everybody's starting to get on board with Terry Williams, the freshman All-America wide receiver, had a big game last night, seven, seven catches for over 150. So the clock is requested to stop here. Didn't really see why they wanted the clock stop that time, but they did. East Central puts a foot on that one, and oh, that one looked a lot more dangerous than I thought it was going to be. So Haley McGill coming in, making another great stop, and had the wherewithal to quickly race up and get that one before the East Central player closed in in a hurry to possibly get a shot off the rebound. So Haley McGill looking impressive here. In the second half, after a nice first half performance by Mary Kate Grayson. So coming up now on 4.15 to play in this one. Sends it ahead. Nice touch. This is Allie Barnett with it now. Trying to go wide and just a little too wide as the ball goes out of bounds. And back to East Central. ICC softball is on the road. They're playing in Florence at the Florence Sports Complex. And that's a clear foul there as Barnett came in and made a great play to make a stop on the ball and then was wrapped up and tackled right around the 30-yard line, if you will. So this will be Jaggers coming in.
That one's going to be cleared out. And East Central will control. 3.20 to play. And this one sends it ahead. And good job that time by Savannah Courtright to outrace that one and just click, kick it out of bounds and allow the defense to reset with her. Well, the Indians, or Lady Indians, trying to find a way to hang on here late in the contest. Trying to pick up that valuable win and improve to 5-1, and 9-5 and five overall. We hope to be able to catch up with Coach David Strother during the men's match. Talk about today's matchup and the rest of the season, how it's been going for Strother and the Lady Indians. So the ball out of bounds. 240 and counting in this one. Once again, that clock cannot run quick enough if you're an ICC fan. And this will be McGill set to get it, get it. step into that one. East Central comes up and makes a nice play on it. Court right finds it. Mad scramble for it, and East Central comes away. East Central, wow. Good looking shot from distance that time. By 32, Carrington Payne got a good foot into that one, but Haley McGill right in the right spot at the right time to make the save. So EC is getting a lot of shots here late in the contest. So they're trailing in this one 2-0. And that one's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to result, I believe, in a corner kick here with 1.45 to play. And one of the East Central players, one of the men's players, kicked the ball towards the ICC net, and so that's actually going to allow the clock to run a little bit more, and his, right here, the women's boy, coach boy. not too happy with that decision. So now a minute and a half to go in this one. Corner piece on its way. Too tall. Going to try for the backside, and it's going to go out of bounds. There'll be another corner opportunity coming up here for East Central. EC with their back against the wall now, coming up on a minute and 15 seconds left in this one. ICC trying to find a way to hang tough here. They lead 2-0. Another corner piece coming up here for East Central. Sends across the middle, cleared outside that time. And good job that time by Yayo sacrificing her body, coming up to jump in front of that one, not allowing to get a good shot, deflects it off, and the Indians, Lady Indians, excuse me, are able to get that one, and it's going to be kicked and saved. Another nice job by Haley McGill as she has just been money and lights out here in the second half as... She is taking a barrage of shots here in the latter stage of this contest. And East Central takes it away again. That one's going to go out of bounds. And now there's 30 seconds left to play. And you can go ahead and wrap this one up in red and blue as ICC is going to survive a flurry of shots and aggressive offense by East Central in the final minutes of this contest to hang on to what looks to be a 2-0 victory. Now with 15 seconds to play, ICC players are celebrating here to our right as that one's going to go out of bounds and by the time they toss this one in they'll have maybe enough shine for a final shot three seconds two seconds and that's going to do it your final score in this one ICC wins it two to nothing over East Central as the Lady Indians celebrate the victory this afternoon you see Haley McGill getting sworn by her teammates there a great effort this afternoon by the Lady Indians, ICC picks up the 2-0 victory after a pair of goals by Deanna Christie. And this one, ICC improves to 9-5 and five overall and 5-1 five and one in the north. East Central falls to 3-4 and four and 2 overall, 1-4 and four in the north. Well, that's going to do it here for this broadcast of ICC Women's Soccer on Let'sGoICCTV.com. We're going to take about a 10-15 um, minute break and come back with the men's action here on Let's Go ICCTV.com, back with more right after this.